Welcome back to The Caregiver Minute, where every weekday, family and professional caregivers gather to refine their skills, gain inspiration, and prepare to serve. Whether you're serving someone in the home or in a professional setting, chances are you're working with other people. We work in family units, we work in teams, so it's valuable to consider what factors make for really successful group processes, what helps us function better as a team. Well, one of the most important factors with a team is trust. So do you trust the people around you and do they trust you? Let's consider trust for a few moments. Normally, when we think of trust, we think of it in a predictive future sense. Maybe I'm working with Sally, and I trust Sally that if I give her such and such assignment, that she's going to follow through on it really effectively, that I don't even need to worry about it. If I ask Sally to do it, it's going to get done. Versus maybe I'm working with Jim over here and I don't have trust that if I give him an assignment, it's going to get done. He tends to get distracted and so I feel like I'm going to have to follow up with him more frequently to make sure that that thing gets done. That's normally how we think about trust. It's just not the type of trust that helps us function most effectively as a team. What we really need is an emphasis on vulnerability-based trust. Vulnerability-based trust means it's okay to mess up. It's okay to be vulnerable. A lot of us have grown up in a culture that seems to pride ourselves on the idea that leaders have the answers and they have all the skills and they're able to show up in the moment and know exactly what to do from moment to moment, which prompts people to not let their warts show, to not let their imperfections out, uh, to try to hide the fact that they don't have all the answers. Well, none of us has all the answers. We desperately need each other to help figure things out. And we're all flawsome. We're deeply flawed and we're awesome at the same time. We're capable of amazing things, but we're all just one choice away from total disaster. And sometimes, despite our best efforts, we mess up. If we're not able to comfortably own up to that, if it's not a safe environment to say, wow, I really blew it. I totally made a mistake. If, if the goal is perfection at all costs and there is no room for any sort of error or mistake, then that's going to breed an environment where there's not as much trust. People have a hard time being okay letting their flaws be seen by others. So what can we do about this? Whether you have a title that makes you a leader or you're just trying to positively influence the people around you, I think it's really helpful when any of us has the courage to say, I really blew it. Now, if you're in a position of leadership where you have the title, to say that really helps because it makes it a safe place for other people to admit to and own up to their mistakes. There's nothing that we can't get past if we don't own up to it and talk about it. Unfortunately, far too many leaders create situations where they are communicating to others that they just want them to go along to get along. So imagine, for example, that we start a new marketing program and we think that everybody's on board with it and we go a few months down the road and then have a team meeting about that marketing program and someone on the team says, hey, I, I think that this plan is a total disaster. I don't think it's working at all. If the leader of that team turns to this other person who raises the concern and says, well, where were you three months ago? You should have brought that up. This is what we're doing. We're going forward. Are you on this bus or not? That type of response says, I really don't want to hear what you have to say. I can't take the criticism. I don't want it. I'm not interested in what might be true for the organization. I'm just interested in demonstrating to everybody that I'm the one who's right because after all, I'm the leader here. That doesn't serve the organization very well. As Ray Dalio put it in his book, Principles, what is true for the organization is far more important than who is right. And the only way that we can figure out what is true for the organization is to wrestle with things and to try something, to take a few steps forward, and then to reevaluate and to have the kind of vulnerability-based trust that allows us to look at those things that we've been doing with a critical eye and say, is that serving us well? Is that moving us toward the goal? Is that actually helping? It takes a lot of humility for any of us to swallow our pride and admit that 
maybe the thing that we're trying is not working so well and it's time to try something different. Maybe the idea that we put forth that everyone decided to run with is not quite the most effective idea and maybe we should try this other idea for a time and see how we do with that. So today I invite you to consider how you can be more vulnerable around other people. This doesn't mean that you just cry and let the tears flow all the time. Being vulnerable means you allow yourself to be imperfect and you don't try to hide that fact. Doing so makes you more credible with other people and it creates a situation that allows them to be just as human as you and I are. I hope that makes a difference for you and the people that you serve and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another episode of the Caregiver Minute.